I mean, it added a lot more weight to the games, and in higher playlists, people were betting thousands of COD points at a time, making the matches super intense. As much as I'd love to see wager matches come back, there's no way they're going to literally put a gambling system in Call of Duty 2020. It's not going to happen. The golden age of Call of Duty is long behind us. I know that. But that doesn't mean we can't remember how great it was, right? For most people, the golden age of COD was 2007 to 2012. Or COD 4 to Black Ops 2. And the game has changed a lot since those days ended. What is up, everybody? Chaos here. Welcome to the video. Today we are going to be going over 20 things that only Golden Age Call of Duty players will remember. I'm actually kind of interested to see how long my audience has been playing COD. So in the comments, let me know what year you started playing COD and which COD game you played first. League play. Now Call of Duty has always had a weird relationship with ranked modes, but back in Black Ops 2, they hit it perfect. They hit it out of the park. League Play was Black Ops 2's ranked playlist, and it was the first true ranking system in COD history. Most people will still tell you it's the best we've ever gotten, and if the playlist featured only competitive modes and with the MLG rule set, no UAVs, no ghosts, no hunter killer, so on and so forth, you would grind up your rank and try to go with the pros. It was so much fun, and it's a major head scratcher that Call of Duty still does not ship with a ranked playlist every year. What? Oh, that's kill. We went so negative. They're though. saying that they lag. Forced game chat. This was an awesome feature, and it's what led to COD becoming such a social game. In most of the objective modes back in the day, your Xbox 360 and PS3 would actually force you out of your party chat and make you be in game chat in order to proceed. This way, you were forced to communicate with your teammates. But of course, it also opened up the doors to years and years of good old-fashioned trash talk. Force Game Chat was pulled out of COD around Advanced Warfare because the developers wanted to reduce the amount of trolling and griefing going on. And given the current climate in gaming, I don't think it's coming back. How about leaning? This is one that people probably forget, but you OG PC COD players, you'll remember. Leaning was introduced in COD Ghost for consoles, but in every Call of Duty game from COD 1 to Modern Warfare 3, there was actually leaning on PC. In fact, that's what gave Infinity Ward the idea to add it to console. Since the PC had more buttons at its disposal, the devs were able to add leaning as a movement option in those games. And I know, hardly anybody used it, but there was some really cheesy stuff you could do with the leaning in the old school COD games. And interestingly, I mean, it, it's just funny how it became a meme in the COD community once it was added to Ghost. Getting gold over and over again. Modern COD players are spoiled with the camo system. Not only do you have a ridiculous amount of camos to grind for, but you also have weapon ranks that are separate from your player rank. That started in Black Ops 2, but from COD 4 to Modern Warfare 3, you lost your camo progress every time you prestige, meaning you had to grind for gold camo over and over again. Now granted, most players didn't mind that back in the day, and that's part of what gave the game so much replay value, and separating the player rank and the weapon rank was a good quality of life improvement, but modern COD players will never know the grind of unlocking true gold camo over and over again. Two and a half minute SND. Search and Destroy has been one of the main competitive game modes ever since the beginning of COD. But ever since COD became a major esport, the developers have been trying to keep the pace up. And the main way they do that is by shortening the round timer. Now, most new Call of Duty games will either have 2 minutes or 90 seconds on the clock at the beginning of a round. But from COD 4 up to Modern Warfare 3, the round timer was a lengthy 2.5 minutes. This made games much longer, but it also made them a lot more intense to watch because it meant the attackers weren't encouraged to just rush the bomb site. The longer time gave teams more wiggle room to strategize, and I thought that was awesome. Starting with BO2, the timer was shortened to try to make it better for spectators, but I know I'm not the only one who would like to see it go back, at least for one game, to see how it would play out. Abusing the spectator mode. Speaking of SD, how many of you used to play SD with your buddies, but then after you died, you would spectate in third person mode and abuse the camera to give your friend the call out? Back in the older CODs, there was a lot less restriction on spectator mode, so if you died in SD, you could spectate your teammates, switch to third person view, and then you could start rotating the camera around to peek corners for them and give them call outs. It was super broken, and later CODs made it so you couldn't do it, but it definitely made some matches more exciting and made you feel like a valuable asset even after you died. I know, it was super unfair, I'm, I'm not denying that. At number 14, cage matches. Ever wonder where 1v1s really started in COD? Here it is. Back in COD 4, there was a playlist called Cage Match, which was you and one other player on shipment in the first to 10 free for all. Now, aside from the fact that a lot of people use this playlist for boosting, they also used it to assert their dominance over other players, and it ultimately is what gave birth 
to the whole culture of 1v1s on shipment. Cage Match briefly returned in Modern Warfare 2, but COD 4 is the only game to have it as a permanent playlist. Speaking of that, Face Off. Man, I loved this playlist. Modern Warfare 3 was all about getting sweaty. Three ways to play. 1v1, 2v2, 3v3. And they were all on smaller maps, and there were even a handful of maps specifically designed for it, like a ground and erosion. Face Off was perhaps the sweatiest playlist in COD history, but it was fun. How many memories do you have partying up with a friend or two and grinding the Face Off playlist? It was the best, and it sucks that it's never come back. Community Camos! This was such an awesome thing that Treyarch did with the community. Black Ops 2 was the first COD game to have DLC camos, and as a way to encourage people to buy them, they actually held polls from time to time about which camo should be added to the game. This led to camos like Cyborg and Dragon and Comics being added in, and it, it was an awesome way for Treyarch to maintain community engagement. I don't think something like this would probably work now with how big Call of Duty is and how hard it is to actually pull the community, but it was cool back then. Next up is Sabotage. Do you remember this? It was kind of a mix between SD and Capture the Flag as both teams were trying to destroy a bomb site, but it was in the enemy's team base rather than being somewhere in the middle of the map. It was a ton of fun. It made for great XP as well. It appeared in every COD game from 2007 to 2011. But after Modern Warfare 3, it has been retired forever aside from Modern Warfare Remastered. We may never see it again. At number 10, The Death Machine. This was a kill streak that appeared in Black Ops 1 and 2, but it never came back in another COD multiplayer game except COD Mobile. But I guess, I, well, it is what it is. In BO1 and 2, The Death Machine was a mid-tier streak that would let you whip out this giant Arnold Schwarzenegger minigun and go wild. It fired stupidly fast. It killed almost immediately, and it made you feel like a walking tank. And sure, you were an easy target when you were holding it, but you were also shredding anyone and everybody on your screen, so it was a good risk reward. It was super fun to use, and it's a shame it's never came back. I guess you could say the, what was it, the Sith in Black Ops 3 was a callback to it, but it wasn't the same. Today's COD players don't know the thrill of going on a street, calling in a death machine, and then walking down the middle lane of the map, absolutely mowing everybody down. The game mode war. Now this appeared in only two COD games, COD 3 and World at War. In both games, it was a huge standout, and it's still really surprising to me it hasn't been brought back. It was basically King of the Hill mixed with Tug of War as two teams were constantly fighting for map control, and the first team to capture all five of the hills, well, they would win. Now, matches could go for a long time, and back in COD 3, they could last up to an hour. It was slightly reworked into momentum in advanced warfare, but it wasn't the same. OG War was one of the best ways to experience Call of Duty. Next up is the Grim Reaper. This was a weapon that has appeared in only one Call of Duty game, but it made such a massive impact that every COD player remembers it. The Grim Reaper was a quad barrel rocket launcher that you could only obtain by getting lucky with a care package, so it was super rare to actually see it on the battlefield. However, if someone in the lobby got their hands on it, it was pretty much game over. It came loaded with 12 rockets total, and each one would deal a minimum of 150 damage. Killed anybody in the blast radius with one hit, and since there were four rockets in it at once, you just you just dominated. It was awesome. And I know, there have been some beefy rocket launchers during that time and since then, but nothing comes close to how strong the Grim Reaper was. At number seven, third person mode. I mean, it's a given. Third person perspective has only been available in one COD game. That was Modern Warfare 2. They really tried to make third person a thing. There was a whole playlist of third person modes and while people really liked it for what it was, it never caught on. COD has never strayed away from the first person per pers perspective. I mean, I think it's ultimately a good thing because it keeps the series focused during the golden age, but honestly, I wouldn't mind a little more, more third person experimentation. Well, we do have COD Mobile. Ammo and care packages. Now, they're a staple of Call of Duty. Care packages are. People love to run them because they're low level streak, give you a chance of getting something beefy if you're able to defend the location when it gets called in. However, back in Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops 1, it was actually pretty common to get ammo from your care package, which was the most obnoxious thing ever. And I'm, I'm glad it was taken out, but it was actually kind of funny. You could always hear the disappointment in your buddy's voice when they called in a care package, defended the location, and then just got some spare ammo out of it. At number five, wager matches. Now, COD points are kind of a dirty phrase today, but back in Black Ops 1, they were your currency for buying camos, guns, and attachments, but then you could gamble them. That's where it got crazy. In wager match playlists, you could queue up with five other players, you bet your COD points, and then you play a party game, gun game, one in the chamber, sticks and stones, or sharpshooter, and then the top three players would split the prize pool while the bottom three would lose all their points. This was added, I mean, it added a lot more weight to the games, and in higher playlists, people were betting thousands of COD points at a time, making the matches super intense. As much as I'd love to see wager matches come back, there's no way 
They're gonna literally put a gambling system in Call of Duty 2020. It's not gonna happen. At number four, speaking of wager matches, Sharpshooter. It was one of my favorite party modes. It first appeared as a wager match in Black Ops 1, then it was brought back as a party mode in Black Ops 2, but it hasn't appeared in another COD game ever since. It was a free-for-all where everybody had the same random gun when they spawned in, and every 45 seconds, the gun would change. It was super intense because everybody had certain guns they were good with and bad with, so you really had to capitalize on your strengths, especially because there was a point where perk bonuses happened if you went on streaks. Sharpshooter was fun, and honestly, I don't know why it hasn't come back since Black Ops 2. It's the only OG party mode to never make a return since 2012. At number three, player counts. I don't get it. Player counts used to be a staple of the series, and every time you opened up a COD multiplayer game, there would be a counter on the main menu that told you how many players were currently online and what, how many were in each game mode you chose. It told you exactly how many, so you knew if you were going to have to wait. Player counts appeared in the Golden Age COD games, but then the series started dropping in sales numbers, so starting with Advanced Warfare, player counts were pulled out of the game in order to protect Activision's... I, I don't know. They're extremely helpful as a tool for finding games quickly, and it's such a shame that they've been pulled out just because... Well, just because, you know? At number two, Black Ops 1 Gold Camo. It was the best camo in COD history, and nobody will ever, ever, ever convince me otherwise. And finally, no skill-based matchmaking. SBMM. It's been getting more and more prevalent over the last few years. It started with AW, then it was hit or miss for a few years, and now it's, it's the strongest ever. I mean, it really is. Part of the whole appeal of Call of Duty back in the day was matchmaking because it was super quick. You never knew who you were going to go up against. Sometimes you had a bunch of bots. Sometimes you'd be in the sweatiest lobby ever. You just never knew. All you knew was you were pushed. When you pushed the matchmaking making button, you'd be in a lobby in a few seconds, and it was going to be a total surprise. Now, matchmaking takes a whole lot longer because of the ghost ranking system, and it leads to sweaty lobbies, bad ping, and the game being a whole lot less enjoyable for people who just like to kick it casually and not worry about the meta. Hopefully, the push for skill-based matchmaking and everything goes away soon because I think it's safe to say the majority of gamers are pretty tired of it. And there you have it. Those are 20 things that only Golden Age COD players will remember. Let me know how many of you guys remember. Drop a like, and I'll see you soon.